Hi, uh, I'm Viraj and today I'll be explaining the working and interfacing of an LED matrix. So a quick overview of what we are going to see ahead. Firstly, I'll be introducing you to the 8085 and the 8255A devices. Then I'll be explaining what a basic LED matrix is and its types and the interfacing of an LED matrix with the 8085 which is done with the help of an 8255A then the working principle of the LED matrix uh, which involves the coding of the matrix pattern and the physics used for multiplexing and lastly some applications so basically the 8085 was made by Intel in 1976 with a clock speed of 3.072 MHz it's an 8-bit microprocessor and uses a 5 volt external power supply. Uh, this is the actual image of an 8085 microprocessor. As you can see, the name of the manufacturer and the year is written over here. And uh, this is basically a pin diagram of the 8085 uh, showing clearly all the pins and the purposes of the pins. Uh, the trap and RST pins are used for uh, interrupts and there are basically uh, 7 plus 7 uh, f uh, sorry 8 plus 8 uh, 16 pins for address transfer and uh, the first 8 out of those 16 are also used for data transfer and also there are other necessary pins for power supply and uh, other purposes I won't be going into much detail but uh, this is the basic idea of an 8085 uh, this is basically the 8255A. Uh, this is the actual image of an 8255A. Uh, again, this was made by Intel. It consists of uh, 40 pins and uh, 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 there are three ports A, B, and C. Uh, each of them consists of 8 pins, and the C port is divided into two parts uh, consisting of 4 pins each. Uh, the 255A is a general purpose programmable input output peripheral device and it can be used with almost any microprocessor. Uh, here we will be using it with the 8085. So this is the pin diagram of an uh, 8255A. As said uh, it has 40 pins and there are different ports A, B and C. Uh, this is a more uh, compressed pin diagram which shows in general the pins and this is a very detailed pin diagram. Again, I won't be going into much detail over here. Uh, moving on, now we reach the LED matrix. Uh, so the main features are multiplexing, uh, which is creating a mesh of the rows and the columns. And uh, there are two types of LED mat mat matrices, basically uh, the common row cathode and the common row anode. So this uh, is uh, the figure to the left is the common row cathode because as you can see the cathode is common to all the rows the row A, B, C and D have all the cathodes in common and over here uh, the anodes are in common to the rows and notice that the rows over here are uh, in a plane that lies above the plane of the columns so the plane of the rows is above the plane of the columns and the LEDs or the diodes basically are uh, connecting the rows to the columns falling vertically downwards so these are two types of uh, LED matrices and this is the actual image of how an LED matrix looks like uh, this is a basically a 4 cross 4 LED matrix but one can have uh, any size of an LED matrix uh, this is a flat ribbon cable which basically connects the LED matrix setup to the 8255A uh, in fact it can be used anywhere even to connect the 8255A to the 8085 it depends upon how your system is So now we move to the interfacing part of the 8255A with the 8085 and the 8255A uh, will be interfacing with the LED matrix and that I'll be explaining how it does that so this is basically a diagram where the pins from the 8085 are connected to the 8255 uh, in the shown manner and uh, here you can see that three ports A, B and C are going out from 8255A each one of them showing eight pins and uh, in this case in the LED matrix we connect the port A and port B to the rows in the columns or the columns in the rows respectively and port C is not used over here uh, as I've said before port A, B and C are programmable input output ports that is that uh, which means that they can be used either for input or for output but while communicating with the LED matrix we just use them for uh, output basically because they 
as they just have to send output signals to the LED matrix and no input is expected from the LED matrix port A and port B are used to output ports and port C is not utilized over here uh, because of this reason port A and port B are connected to the rows and the columns uh, respectively and port C is not really used over here and uh, over here port A and port B have 8 pins and each one of them is connected to every row and every column as shown in the figure now uh, the way the data is sent to the LED matrix is that all the data is not sent at once uh, because there is multiplexing and uh, it becomes a real challenge for uh, sending the data and getting a desired pattern but that will be explained further so uh, let me explain the problem which comes if one tries to send all the data at once when you have multiplexing in the LED matrix. So supposing you want to light up the leftmost and the topmost LED which is the column 1 and row 1 LED. So you will send a high in column 1 and low in row 1. That will light up the first LED. Now supposing you want to light up the last LED then you will send a high in row uh, row f uh, sorry column 4 and low in row 4 this will light up the last LED now supposing I want to light both of these LEDs at the same time then intuition says that you will send a high in column 1 and column 4 and low in row 1 and row 4 uh, simultaneously but that won't work because when one does that the problem uh, is that this happens uh, those two LEDs will definitely light up but there will be two extra LEDs that will light up and they light up because column 1 is high and row 4 is low so this lights up and accordingly uh, row 1 is low and column 4 is high so this one lights up so that is a problem and uh, this is the basic maths which shows that it's not possible to get a, a, all the desired patterns by sending data all at once because an 8 plus 8 LED matrix will have 2 raised to 64 patterns by permutations and combinations and the total types of signals that can be sent uh, you, you can figure this out by doing some mathematics that it will be 2 raised to 8 into 2 raised to 8 which is 2 raised to 16 and 2 raised to 16 obviously is less than 2 raised to 64 is much less than 2 raised to 64 and hence one cannot obtain all the pat patterns by sending uh, the data all at once now so e how exactly is the data sent uh, uh, the data of the rows is sent at once but uh, for the columns uh, the data of each column is sent one by one so uh, for the first instance the column uh, the data of column one will be sent and the data of all the rows will be sent so what will happen is this uh, the uh, corresponding LEDs will light up for column one only and in the next instant uh, instance the data of column 2 will be sent and then data of column 3 and so on uh, and it will be repeated from column 1 to 8 again and again but in the end what you see in the matrix is the whole pattern appears to be uh, at one instance uh, you don't see the columns lighting up one after the other that is because of persistence of vision so uh, the whole cycle is completed within the per persistence of vision which is uh, typically one tenth of a second so in one tenth of a second all the columns light up once and the cycle is completed so what the eye sees uh, as a net result is that only uh, uh, the pattern doesn't move column by column the pattern appears to be stable uh, because of persistence of vision now uh, the coding pattern for the LED matrix the coding pattern is very simple so consider the first column uh, there are four and now break it into two parts the first four LEDs and the lower four LEDs so the first four LEDs are basically converted into a binary string and so are the lower four LEDs converted into a binary string so why are the binary uh, if the LED is lit then the digit is 1 and if it is not lit then the digit is 0 so why are the binary sequence will be 1 0 0 0 and over here in the lower part the binary sequence will be 1 1 1 1 as all of them are lit now converting this binary sequence into hexadecimal which can be done easily you will get that uh, the hexadecimal conversion for uh, this binary string is 8 and for this one is f, f so basically for the first column the data will be f8 and if one converts all the columns into hexadecimal data then they will turn out to be f8 14 12 11 f8 14 12 
12 11 11 12 14 f8 so this will be basically the data for all the columns and corresponding to the rows uh, and this data is stored at a memory location and when recalled will be sent to the uh, port a and port b into the rows in the columns and the pattern will be generated accordingly now the basic applications of these kind of led mat matrices are uh, the LED matrix boards which display any desired data and one very nice technique uh, which I'll explain uh, is that how the text is appears to be moving so what they basically do as you saw over here this is the pattern for A now supposing I shift this pattern by one column and put F8 over here 14 over here and accordingly and the last F8 is thrown out and 12 is put over here and 14 over here so the new uh, pattern that will appear will consist of uh, the corresponding LEDs lit up uh, one row towards the right. So when uh, it is shifted one more row towards the right and then one more row after and played after some fixed intervals it appears like the whole pattern is moving towards the right. So this is basically the principle of how moving test text is displayed uh, via such kind of LED boards. So that is it and hope this video uh, was informative for all of you. Thank you.